Hey there guys, Christian here again with a bit more quickly put together video considering I didn't put up the last one until two months after the release of the first teaser trailer, whereas today only marks exactly one week since the release of the newest trailer. I really wanted to do a companion video to the last one, cause this whole thing felt almost unfinished had I not. And I have been getting quite a few asking me if maybe I would consider doing such an update on the whole thing, and I'm glad I did. I wanted to give this one just as much thought, I really wanted to put in the same effort as last, and that is why this video hasn't been put up until today opposite with the analyzing video, the one that started all of this and where it took me like eight weeks before I put up that piece, I did want to get this one out there as quick as possible, but as I mentioned, that doesn't mean that I did this one half-assed. I've been thinking a lot. So this is basically just gonna be me talking to you guys about what I'm thinking now, in case some of you who enjoyed the previous video of mine from months ago would like to know where I stand in the light of this new trailer. And oh boy, there is a lot to unpack. Let's just get the big one out of the way now, shall we? Ellie's Toast. Yes, as I suspected and felt so deep in my stomach four months ago when first analyzing the Tisa trailer and looking at what was right in front of my face, I just knew something was up. Oh, and by the way guys, you wouldn't believe the shitstorm of hate messages I got after putting up that first video and started explaining why I thought they might just kill Ellie in this one. Many were calling me an idiot and downright stupid for thinking they would ever even consider something like that. Whatever, that's just the world we live in and we can't control such people, now can we? The ones who saw the video, whom appreciated it and wrote back kind words about it, those are the posts that I care about, so I thank you so much for that. I also got a ton of messages saying that they appreciated the video and the effort I threw into it and that they enjoyed it, but that they still wholeheartedly hoped I was wrong. That's awesome. There's still mutual respect there, so I applaud that just as much. So thank you all again and let's move on. I saw the new trailer and I've seen it a couple of times now. For the most part, I liked it. Yeah, I know, shocker. I actually think in many ways that it shows promise of a mature movie that truly is very psychologically based and I will explain why. Clearly this is not the book from A to C and it is not the old movie either, it's its own thing. But I do see them keeping the core values of Pet Cemetery intact and in the very very end that is what matters to me personally. I do have some issues with this trailer, but I am not going to be a total downer about it, but it's not going to go without a notice or two either. I'll deliver my thoughts to you now and we can agree or don't agree. If you care to comment in the section below, it's all subjective, all opinions are valued, at least by me, and all thoughts should be respected and allowed to be heard without someone being bashed for it. So guys, let's try to keep it nice and clean, shall we? Okay, as those who've watched the last video from beginning to end, they know by now that it didn't shock me in the slightest to have confirmed that Ellie is indeed the one getting road killed in this new adaptation. It didn't shock me. What shocked me, though, was the fact that they fucking spoiled that reveal. Not only that, they spoiled the entire freaking movie, it would seem. I've seen a hell of a lot of spoilerish trailers in my time, as I'm sure you guys all have, but this one? This one takes the cake. My mouth dropped when I was realizing they just revealed and spoiled the fact that Ellen Creed is gonna die and not Gage. But it got worse. After that, they kept on showing the entire aftermath of things. What the hell? Are you serious? The whole movie was compressed within that two and a half minute trailer. I just, I, I couldn't believe it. Now that is out of the way, let's just get into it and what I thought about the trailer itself. We're gonna do this a little different this time guys, as I simply want us all to go through the trailer from beginning to end together. I'm gonna play some and then at points I'm gonna pause and talk to you guys about that bit and everything that comes to mind, so here goes. In the woods today. L.A. discovered a charming little landmark. The Pet cemetery. A place to bury our pets and remember them. It might seem scary, but it's not. Perfectly natural. Just like dying is natural. 
love this entire opening. I actually do. I love the subtle piano notes in the background. I love the look of this trailer in general, uh, which doesn't seem as grayish, dull and lifeless as it felt in the teaser trailer. I do feel some atmosphere going on here, like this movie maybe just might have a soul and heart of its own. I love the dialogue in this opening, Rachel's line about the charming little landmark, I thought that was really good. Uh, Ellie's The Pet Cemetery line also landed for me. Yes, I know that I am fly-fucking every little detail here, but stuff like that actually matters to me. As someone dreaming of making it as an actor myself, oh and by the way I'm from Denmark, born and raised, um, I know that no line is just a line. It's how you choose to deliver that line. I'm talking about matching the tone of your voice to the feel of things. Things. It's just as much about what is hidden beneath the lines of what you're saying. And when Ellie says the pet cemetery, it doesn't exactly sound cheerful, like it's something she thinks is cool. In fact, quite the opposite. You can feel the unsettling tone lingering in her voice when she says it, and I love that. It also really struck me the way that Lewis tries to comfort his daughter and his delivery of the whole, it seems scary, but it's not. It's perfectly natural, just like dying is natural. I really like that. I'll be honest, I've never really known exactly what to feel of Jason Clark as an actor. Not that I dislike him, but I've never really been able to place him. It's, it's kind of weird. But right from the get-go in this opening here, hearing him speak those lines to his pretend daughter, suddenly I felt a warm spot for him. I really think he's gonna do well in this film, and he seems like a genuine Lewis Creed. Um, overall, the acting in this film I think is gonna be top-notch. I'm not worried about that. So, uh, so far, so good. Oh, oh, and by the way, when we first heard Jason Clark speak off-screen, you know the, uh, it's the place to bury your pets and remember them for a second, I honestly thought that sounded like an old-school jut to me. That was kind of funny. Anyway, let's move on. The whole town's been using this place for generations. Folks make a kind of ritual out of it. This piece I like too. The dialogue is still good and we get to fully hear that the folks in this town, being the children, makes a ritual out of these burials. I can deal with it, cause at least now it's clear it is just innocent rituals they've got going on and that wasn't quite clear in the teaser. That being said, they still felt the need to use that jerky motion effect when that kid turns his head and I just don't get why they need that, you know, the scenario considered, but whatever. Regarding Judd, um, look, I think it's pretty clear now that this isn't going to be the old school Judd we're getting, and I actually think, don't shoot me, that this is going to be for the better. They couldn't win on that one no matter what. Had they tried, fans of the original would still say Fred Gwynn was way better. I mean, better. Uh, I mean, come on guys, you know it to be true. And in that light, had Lithgow tried to do the accent, I honestly think it would just end up being distracting, which is also what the filmmakers have talked about in earlier interviews. I can get past this. It it's gonna be a different Judd, but I still feel, seeing the trailer, that the heart and soul of the man is still very much kept intact. I think it's gonna be just fine. Accent or not, this won't be what saves or kills the movie. Lithgow is a great actor, and while one easily gets nostalgic about the past, me too guys, I kinda understand why they went a different way with this specific Judd. Again, all is subjective, and I'm not trying to tell you guys what to think, I'm just explaining my view of things. It's not some campfire story. Saw these in the trees up there. They're warnings. The local tribes carved them before they fled. They fear that place. There's something up there. Something that dates way back. Those woods belong to something else. Love that entire bit. Dialogue is still strong, and what had me nodding was the way they captured the dangers and powers of the woods. Here's talking about atmosphere, guys, in my opinion. They nail that perfectly here from the book and how Stephen King described it. I love those visuals here, albeit slightly digital enhanced, but I think it looks good. And the Wendigo, the Wendigo, guys, holy shit, you really see that picture from within the book. They actually seem to be incorporating that evil force behind it all into this film, like truly digging into it, something they didn't do in the old movie, and that must be applauded. I mean, compliments are due where compliments are due, and this is one of them. When they talk about the symbols in the book and Jet says the locals carved them before they fled, they feared it. Love that delivery, great stuff. Something. That cat was dead. 
that brings things back. Church? Damn. And that was the big one. Ellie ain't breathing anymore, guys. I was so shocked that they spoiled that, but that aside, I really like this bit too. I know, it's shocking. And guys, there's gonna be way more to this sequence in the movie, of course. This is massively trimmed down for the trailer. Remember, this is a hard-rated R movie, and I, I think it's gonna be gruesome. This whole bit I thought was all very effective, and that clean cut from when Louis screams seeing Ellie on the road to the part with the coffin and the silence that instantly takes over, yet not because you hear that painful and subtle tone of the ringing, buzzing sound in your ear sometimes, very effective, and that really got to me. Again, I must applaud Jason Clark here, and that's just judging from the trailer alone, because that look of total numbness on his face in that funeral bit is gut-wrenching. So subtle and so incredibly effective because of it. It's very sad to me. You can sense Rachel beside him crying over his shoulder, and he just doesn't give a fuck. His mind is in a totally different place at this point, so filled with anger and hate for the world, knowing that he's already planning stuff in his head best not to be thought about. This is also exactly how it's described in the book. Lewis doesn't take much notice to Rachel's grief. He's locked away in his own starting to become mad mind, and it clearly shows here. It really hurts to see, but that's exactly how it's supposed to be. Oh, and I gotta mention this. If that cat is supposed to be back from the dead, it's got like the prettiest lifelike green eyes I have ever seen. But I don't know. Let's just move on. I know what you're thinking of doing. But they don't come back the same. Daddy. <laughs> Who's? What's going on? <gasps> Hug your daughter. I should never have shown you that place. Your child is not the only thing that will come back. The barrier is broken. Again, I thought they spoiled shit when they clearly showed Ellie is roadkill, but this here took it to a new level. Not only do we witness the sequence where Ellie dies, but they choose to move on with the rest of the trailer like the last minute of it, showing the entire aftermath too, which is something that continues into the final bit coming up. I was floored that they went so far as to show so much. If there was ever any doubt or thoughts of misdirect, and believe me, those people still exist out there, regarding the whole Ellie dying or not, this here aftermath of things nails it down. This chick is a goner. She comes home, sneaking up on her dad from behind, which by the way was actually creepy to me. She stops and speaks the line, Daddy. From here on, they go even further. We see Rachel back home, standing with Louis, asking him what is going on. Ellie comes walking in from the hallway. Rachel looks frightened as hell, backing up towards the wall. Ellie walks in, Louis looking pale as hell as he speaks his line with tremendous attention to detail, displaying both grief, sadness, not happiness in the slightest, combined with that haunting weariness in his voice as he himself looks a little bit like a loony bin at this point, and then it comes. Hug your daughter. Such a fucked up line given the scenario, and I mean that in a good way. They really seem to be taking this whole story extremely serious. There is no campiness going on here. Go ahead, hug your dead daughter. What's wrong, Rachel? I thought you'd be happy. Look at me. I'm happy. Yeah, everything is just amazing around the Creed house here. Hug her. And all of it is displayed with such nerve and seriousness. I mean, they really went for it. It's fucked up. Up, people. Seriously, I found it so disturbing, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't need to see the trailer more than once to feel that part hitting me like a ton of bricks. It ran cold all the way through my body. Ellie then hugs her mother and Rachel looks beyond horrified, just glancing a bit up at the ceiling as she struggles to keep up with her own breathing. Amazing acting. That whole scenario is so bone-chilling when you wrap your head around it for just a moment. 
It was also during this part where I suddenly felt what the filmmakers and producers have said many times before when talking about the grounded and deep psychological aspects of the film. They're really diving into it in this new adaptation, it would seem. This whole scenario here will, unlike in the old movie, get to play out right in front of our eyes. It's really inspired by a conversation in the book where Lewis lie in bed with Rachel one night shortly after Gage's death and they talk. Lewis at this point pretty much has already made up his mind to bury Gage up there. Now, completely unaware to Rachel, he is poking at her with weird ass questions, giving the situation, trying to make it actually okay and justified in his mind why she would also be okay with her husband burying their son up there on the Micmac burial grounds without actually telling her that that is what he's gonna do. Do. They have this whole discussion in the book where Lewis asks Rachel stuff like, Do you think he would have loved Gage just as much had he been born retarded? Lewis sees that their returned Cat Church is clearly a different being, and it's many times described in the book how dead Cat Church has lost all of his gracefulness upon his return from the grave. It slenders along in clumsy ways, almost as if it's drunk many times. That, combined with the different stories he's heard from Judd, he starts to ponder of such things as, Would Rachel love Gage just as much if he came back, I don't know, a little weird? The conversation in the book, of course, is much more detailed and rich in exposition, but you get the point. Rachel, of course, thinks Lewis is acting weird as hell, and appalled, she replies back, Of course I would have loved our son just as much no matter what, so stop being weird. Point being, when I saw that moment in the new trailer with dead Ellie returning and walking over hugging her mother, it hit me. That conversation from within the book is something they're gonna translate literally to the screen in this new version, and we're gonna see all of that play out before Ellie goes nuts on them. I honestly find that bit very fascinating and it's so disturbing. I could definitely see some extreme intense character work come to play here. How are they gonna deal with this whole situation now that they did it, or Lewis did it, and the trauma of it all, it's just crazy to think about. We move on with a couple of more images that I don't have any problems with. Um, I mean, I'll continue to think that the kits and animal masks are generic, but this image here I think is a flashback. Or it might not be. Anyway, the girl in the middle there is the same kid as seen here. That cat mask is not the same as the one Ellie wears, if some should have thought that. However, Ellie wearing a cat mask does at least make it a bit more characteristic as it binds her and Church. Ellie's mask she seems to find hanging on a cross at the pet cemetery as seen in the shot from the beginning of the trailer here. And that mask differs from the one seen here as that one doesn't go all down around the mouth, you know, to cover it. And Ellie's does. Still, I would have preferred no masks at all, cause the face of a little dead girl is a billion times more disturbing to me than a dead girl wearing a... mask. And that kid tilting his head with that rabbit mask on, it is so goddamn cliched, I just can't believe they went for that. Uh, yeah, let's just move on. Um, okay, during this part of the trailer, an interesting line is also spoken by Judd. He says, I should have never shown you that place. Your child is not the only thing who'll come back. That was striking to me. I know these are pretty much right out of the book and old movie, but it's Judd's little add-on to that classic line that stirred something up in me. Again, he closes by saying, your child is not the only one who'll come back, and that's new. I found it interesting, cause as the barrier is broken, I think that also means more literally this time around that the evil they've welcomed into their lives also opens up old wounds from the past. This is why I think we're gonna get a lot more Zelda in this one. I think they're gonna go a lot deeper with the traumas from the past, showing us these things from the perspectives of the individual characters. I also think we're gonna get a dead Norma coming back to mess with Judd. I touched upon Judd's wife Norma and that whole scenario in my previous video, but I think I was wrong about one specific line of thoughts, and I'll explain this right after the trailer here, so let's finish this final part. We have a second chance. Sometimes dead is better. <laughs> F 
everything goes nuts in this last part. We saw the lovely chick Zelda, but as suspected in my previous video, we still haven't seen her face. In live footage, that is. What do you mean by that, Christian? You'll find out later. I think they're gonna save a frontal view of Beauty Queen Zelda till the movie itself, but again at this point, I mean, who knows. They've already spoiled practically everything else there is, so yeah. By the way, these snapshots here were kinda tough to capture just right. Ellie jumping up in mom's bed and more than likely killing her here. That is not a scalpel, that is a kitchen knife as seen in this snapshot here, which you really have to pause at just the right millisecond to capture. Go ahead and try yourself, that is not easy. That is Ellie who probably just murdered her mom crawling over the bed. And this might be a good time to mention this. I'm not one for talking shit about others, but I have to mention, at least anonymously, how baffled I was to find out after the release of this trailer how many there are, and there are a lot, whom are still in complete and total denial about the fact that they're gonna kill Ellie. They still don't believe it. Seriously, if you head over to Paramount Pictures' own YouTube channel right now and you scroll through the comments section of the trailer, you'll be amazed at how many whom are still completely refusing to believe that they're gonna kill this girl instead of Gage. I read so many comments, and I'm paraphrasing here, but they're saying, trust me, they're faking it. It's Gage that's gonna die. No way it's gonna be her. Stephen King wouldn't allow it in a million years. Also, no way it's Ellie, she has The Shining, they can't kill her, newsflash guys. It's a confined movie, it's not gonna be an MCU, DC, wannabe, shared cinematic movie. And I personally like that, I'm glad that they're gonna focus on one movie, its own story, its own heart and soul, it's a confined thing. It goes on. That person jumping up in the bed, that's probably Gage. Yeah, that really looks like Gage. And the funniest one to me would be... It's gonna be Gage that dies, cause in the teaser trailer you heard Lewis scream Gage right before the image of the truck came on. This new trailer is all fake footage because they want us to think it's Ellie. Guys, there's a lot more and I really had to hold myself back from simply replying to such comments and say, are you fucking kidding me? That's it, that's all I really just wanted to comment and say, are you fucking kidding me? It is frightening to see the amount of denial that is going on right now and around this whole swap. People thinking this whole new trailer is a misdirect and that it will indeed be Gage dying and not Ellie. Nope. The misdirect was the first teaser trailer and Lewis screaming Gage. That was the misdirect. They just opened up Pandora's box. This new trailer is the reveal of things. This is the filmmakers ahead of time, letting people, for better or worse, get used to the idea that Ellie is gonna splat in this one. Deal with it. It's gonna happen, okay? So please, for your own sake, stop torturing yourself. Do a little googling if you want and you'd realize that coincided with the new trailer, there also were interviews released from the directors explaining in detail why they made that swap for a modern day version and most of it made kind of sense. Now, one could argue that the vision of a three-year-old toddler with a scalpel slowly stepping into the moonlight coming through the kitchen window over at Judd's place and just stands there grinning at Judd, who himself is standing numb in the doorway to the kitchen as he sees Demon Gage speak such words to him like, You're a wife or a cheap whore fucking all your friends. Did you know, Judd? She let them put it in her ass, Judd. And then just waving that scalpel around. Come over here, Jed. I want to show you something. That is more ballsy in today's world. That is so fucked up in the most vulgar ways. And they didn't even go that far in the old movie, even though it was Gage coming back to life in that one. And there is an upside to this little story bit I just told you. Because if you're honest with yourselves, many of you are probably thinking right about now that you would definitely want to see that vulgar shit up on screen, which I just described to you. Right? Honestly? Me too! 
I was thinking go all out or don't, and here's the upside, because I do think that they are gonna go all out on this one, ladies and gentlemen, which is exactly why they did the switch for this one in the first place. You can't get a toddler to act these scenes on screen like you can in the book. You can't get the performance and vulgar language out of the mouth of a three-year-old without dubbing or using CG, whatever. Maybe a doll, but I mean, no matter what, I'm almost fairly certain that it would have been noticeable and taken the audience out of the movie pronto. With an eight-year-old girl playing this part, there is an awareness there, there's a maturity there. They can do all of this crazy shit with her, and I think it's gonna be proven that this was a big deal in the decision-making of why they went for the swap. So if they do go all out on this stuff, and that's the main reason, this is something that I don't believe will be shown or heard until we sit in the movie theater and see it in its entirety. Cause again, this is a hard rated R film, and that is some vulgar language and very disturbing shit. So that might just be where the shock value will still hit, so we'll see. Uh, I'm sorry, I kinda went off the rails there for a while, uh, let's get back on track. A lot of quick editing during this final part. Um, I love the line delivered by Lewis. We have a second chance. Jesus Christ, dear doctor, look yourself in the mirror. He is so far gone at this point. Just look at that pale face and those eyes. This is a man on the brink of insanity. I love it. This final part has some quick moody shots as well. Uh, love the hand reaching out for Lewis when he climbs the deadfall and all of that. Uh, and of course we end the trailer with the famous new version of the Achilles heel death scene. This will no doubt be painful to see in the movie itself, cause again, hard rated R. And these trailers here are green band trailers, which people must keep in mind, cause that means that they've cleaned them up good. Victor Pascal also looks rather nice in the footage we've seen of him, but in the movie I have no doubt that we'll see his cracked skull and a lovely brain pulsating inside. Yuck. And why does she need the mask here? I mean, the girl is a bit more generic no matter what, we've seen the creepy little girl a thousand times before, but I do prefer that without the mask, so I just don't get some of these creative choices, but I guess we just have to deal with it. So, um, that was the new trailer. Look, I have a feeling that this might come as a surprise to many who saw my previous video when I say that for the most part, I did rather like it. Tons better than the first, in my opinion. Many of you, no doubt, feels very different and don't think this was good, but when accepting that Ellie will die this time and then looking at the trailer, I think it shows promise in new ways, even though it clearly deviates from the book and old movie. But I still think there's a very strong essence kept intact, and if you ask me, it feels heightened within this new version, judging from the trailer, spoilers or not. It all goes back to the book and that discussion Lewis has with Rachel after Gage dies. Would you still have loved him just as much if he'd be a little different and all of that? It still doesn't mean that they'll deliver and execute it well, but the potential is definitely there and the acting seems very solid. I think Ellie will die much earlier on in this film than Gage did within the old movie because the biggest part of the story this time around, I now think, will be that we as an audience get to see them live with this being. There is no light at the end of this tunnel and it's gonna be a huge message. Uh, I also talked about this in my previous video when Ellie dies and she comes back, if it's like in the book and the dead brings back with them all the hate and god-awful evil speakings, she'll be turning every single loving discussion she had with Lewis earlier on in the movie, you know, when she was alive and then during this last part when she comes back from the grave, starts manipulating her father and her whole family, twisting those discussions they had of love and humanity, you know, and just standing in front of Gage's crib just saying, you should be dead with me. Dead is better, little brother. And there's also potential of Ellie fucking with her mother, driving her crazy over all that Zelda stuff, you know, maybe even making her feel guilty for letting her die back in the days. All of these elements remains to be seen, so when thinking about that, it does still have me intrigued, the potential of it. I do have hopes for this one, believe it or not. I'm skeptic as hell, and I know that this is a very different approach to the story, but I'm gonna keep an open mind until I've seen the film for myself. It could end up disastrous, yes, no doubt, but it could also end up, when seen in its entirety, to actually be a very effective and surprising film. You can't 
In the end, you can't judge it from a trailer, no matter what. We've all seen trailers that looked awesome to movies that ended up like crap and vice versa. One can be mad that they've changed up so much, or one can look at it this way. No matter what, the old movie still remains for those loving that one, and I do too. But could this new one, if we gave it half a chance, maybe happen to be able to stand on its own two feet? Is that possible? I think it is, and I'm gonna give it that chance, and I don't want it to fail, why would I? I might hate it, I might love it, or maybe somewhere in between. I'm just gonna keep an open mind, that's what I'm saying. Alright, I want to quickly touch upon the entire scenario with Judd and his wife Norma. As I mentioned earlier in the last video, I was pretty sure that the rapidly paced scene with the old lady in the rocking chair was manipulated to have it stand out as scary when, in the movie itself, I was almost sure that this would be a sad moment, not a scary one. I thought it would turn out to be Norma having a heart attack and also, like in the book, being senile, why she clearly forgets the iron on the ironing board as seen in the trailers. I mean, she's sitting there in the chair freaking out. I was thinking heart attack and a senile woman all at once. Sad. Tragic. I also did add, in the end, that it might just be Norma coming back to fuck with her husband during the end of the movie. I did say that, however, I thought it was doubtful this was the case. Well, um, after the release of this new trailer, which also coincided with those new interviews released from the filmmakers, which I read with the same, I've now made a complete 180 degree turn on that one. In these new interviews, they not only explain why they decided to switch Gage and Ellie's fate, they also mention stuff regarding Judd and his dark past. Here, let me read this for you, which comes from over at the site called Bloody Disgusting. They posted a set visit report, which was a great read, by the way. Head over there and check it out if you like. I just took out this little piece regarding Judd's character in the film, and I'll read that for you now. Lithgow says, starting quote, It makes major changes from the book and from the 80s film. I read the script, I talked at length with the boys, the directors, I accepted the role, and then I read the book. I saw just how much of a departure this film is from the book. A lot of it has to do with Judd's character. Something has happened in his life which has made him a very different person from the way he started out. This is all in the backstory, Lithgow explains, of how deep the differences go. That was there in the script that I read when it was offered to me. That was what really fascinated me about the character, that he's got secrets that bit by bit gets unpacked and unloaded and revealed as the story goes on." End quote. Okay, I don't think he's just talking about his dog that he buried. I think they are gonna go a lot further this time. At first, I thought it would be scary if Ellie was just throwing visions at Judd of his dead wife coming back to torment him, but in the light of what was read in that set report, I now am willing to take that one step further. It's not a vision. As I've learned, sadly enough, the Timmy Baderman storyline is not in this movie. Instead, I think now that they've changed it so that Judd Crandall back in the days buried his own wife Norma up on the Micmac burial grounds. Yes, I think they're gonna go that far. Forget him burying his dog. In this movie, he buried his wife up there and she sure enough returned to him. And this is what we've seen short glimpses of in both the trailers. This hidden dark past of Judd's will be the story replacing the Timmy Baderman one that he eventually reveals to Lewis right after his child dies and trying to make him understand that their loved ones do not come back the same. So we'll see a flashback story to this event, I am almost certain. And you know what, I can deal with that. Again, it's different, but in its essence, it's really the same. And this time, if you think about it, even more personal. I have had a couple of others reaching out to me stating that they too thought this was going to happen, and now I'm in total agreement about that one. Overall, from what was seen in this new trailer, and if you strip away the horny use of animal masks and that kid in his rabbit mask tilting his head, snooze, I actually thought it was a significant step up from the last. I dig the cinematography, I think this one at least made it look like the film might have a life of its own, I sensed atmosphere, I think the cast seems solid, and though I'm not familiar with Amy Simetz playing Rachel, I can already tell that I'm gonna like her. Uh, Jason Clark as Lewis wouldn't have been my first choice, but after seeing what he delivered just in this trailer alone, I've actually warmed up to him somewhat more. Lithgow as Jed, I'm sure will be good, uh, even though he's going to be different. And you know what? The little girl playing uh, Ellie, Chate Lawrence, 
I have a feeling she's going to be really, really good. Okay, I'm almost finished. Just two very short things before I say goodbye. Number one, how many of you have seen the Australian version of this trailer? Wake up, Dada! buddy. Yep, didn't see that in the domestic one. I know it was short, but point being that it clarified something I also touched upon in my previous video. Gage is more vocally able to communicate with his parents in this one. He's taking Ellie's shining ability, if people want to call it that. And the reason for that tone is because in this case, you can call it what you want. This is not connected to anything else. It's a confined one-off of a movie. Again, I like that. So call it the shining, call it what you want. It doesn't matter. Anyway, it won't be a problem to have that little kid say, you know, a few lines like Pax Cow, which is something Ellie calls Pass Cow in the book and old movie, only here it makes more sense that a three-year-old toddler would say Pax Cow, and maybe Dadass doing bad things, saw Ellie, saw Pet Cemetery, and that's all you really need to make this work. And thing number two, I thought it was kind of cool to cap this whole video off with this. How many of you have spotted Zelda on the new poster they released? Yes, she is there in a very discreet way, but she's there. Look closely right to the left side of Rachel's face. That's Zelda. P.S. If this movie ends up delivering the goods, I'm gonna hang up this poster on my wall at home because this is a glorious, beautiful looking piece of art. The kind of which doesn't really see the light of day that often anymore. You know what I mean. So many posters nowadays have no life, no soul, no, no anything. It's just cheap, quickly put together Photoshop and I hate that. And this is very good. It might be made in a computer, but I mean, I love it. I think it looks so great. And that was it, guys. Uh, sound off below in the comments section if you like. And once again, thank you so much for watching. My name is Christian, and you have a great day.